Now let's take a look at what we call osmotic pressure. Now in a previous video we already explained that because of the difference in concentration and because of the statistical probability more water molecules will travel from the less concentrated solution to the higher concentrated solution therefore building up osmotic pressure which can be measured simply by measuring the height of the column here that would build up due to the water molecules driving that pressure this way and of course in physics we know we can measure the pressure by measuring the height of this column and saying that the pressure is going to be equal to the density of the liquid in there times the acceleration of gravity times the height of the column but that would be a physical measurement of the actual situation can we predict what the osmotic pressure would be in a solution without actually making the measurement and yes we can simply by saying if we know the concentration of the solution on the right side and assuming that on the left side we have a very dilute solution or just a pure solvent solution then yes we can figure out what that is and the equation here starts from the equation that most of us know of is PV equals nRT that works for gases it also works for osmotic pressure if we divide both sides by V and then we have number of moles divided by volume that is called the molarity of the solution R is the gas constant and T is the temperature in Kelvin we'll use the gas constant in terms of liter atmospheres per Kelvin divided by moles alright so let's say for example we have a one molar solution on the right side and pure water on the left side what would be the osmotic pressure well let's find out so the pressure would be equal to the molarity in one mole that would be one uh, mole per liter that would be one molar solution the constant for R that is the gas constant which is 0.0821 liter atmospheres divided by Kelvin times moles and then we multiply times the temperature and let's say let's pick 25 degrees so we're going to say temperature equals 25 degrees centigrade of course we have to convert that to temperature in Kelvin so we have to add 273 to that 273 plus 25 is 298 Kelvin notice unit wise the moles cancel out the liters cancel out the Kelvin degrees cancel out and we're just left with atmospheres and then with a calculator let's see what that amounts to that would be 298 oop, 298 times uh, 0 0.0821 and that would be 24.5 atmospheres P equals 24.5 atmospheres. Now that's an enormous amount of pressure. That's phenomenal. Just imagine if we have a one molar concentration of sol a solution over here and pure water on this side, and we just keep adding, feeding pure water on the left side, this will just continue to go across the boundary, build up a higher and higher and higher and higher column of water so that the pressure difference would be 24.5 atmospheres now for water or a solution like that a concentrated solution the density is about one gram per cubic centimeter or 1000 kilograms per cubic meter the water column that could be supported by one atmosphere is about 32 feet it's about hmm, about 10 meters or 10.3 meters so imagine 10.3 meters times 24.5 you'd be able to support a water column about 250 meters tall that would be wow that would be almost 800 feet tall you could support a column of water almost 800 feet tall with this kind of pressure osmotic pressure the numbers are staggering just unbelievable simply because of statistical difference in that more water molecules will travel from left to right than from right to left and you could set up this enormous pressure of 24.5 atmospheres that's absolutely enormous and that is what enables the water to come into the roots of the trees and push all the way to the top of the trees where the leaves can have the water and that's usually done through that process osmotic pressure we'll learn a little bit more about that in later videos